Good morning, everybody. Hey, welcome to this second day of October. I uh, hope your month is off to a great start as, uh, well, the market's not. Yesterday, a down day. We'll talk about that and more in just a few seconds when Dave joins us. The VIX is up, uh, as would be expected. A lot's happening between uh, uh, foreign issues going on with Iran and Israel, as well as the dock worker strike. We'll talk about that and more when Dave joins us up next. Before we do that, though, let's not forget that in this world we live in, there are so many things that are out of our control. However, you can take control of your investment portfolio by knowing the amount of risk you have and knowing the amount of risk you should have based on your current circumstances. That's why I developed the core retirement design. Give us a call at 863-382-0037 to schedule your core retirement analysis. Hey, with that, we got Dave coming up next. Pharrell Williams there and Morning Dave here. It's 841 now. We're at 19 before 9. As always, this time of the morning, we double check and see what's happening to your IRA or 401k. This stuff we talk about even affects the money you stuffed in your mattress. Why do you keep doing that? Let's go downtown to Statler Financial Services, very own Philip Statler. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, man. Doing well today. I hope you are, too. As, uh, hey, we hit into the second day of October. The markets did not like October. They kind of started off in, uh, in a bad mood. Uh, yeah, between Iran throwing a bunch of uh, missiles at Israel and the dock workers starting to strike, it ended up being a not good day. Yesterday, uh, we used to be, uh, if we lost 174 points on the Dow 10 years ago, we would have said, oh, my Lord, the world is ending. It was down by four-tenths of a percent, which is obviously not good news. S&P was down by the better part of a percent, over nine-tenths, down 54 points yesterday. NASDAQ kind of took it on the chin, down 279 points. That's a full percent and a half. I'm going to assume the Russell 2000 wasn't a whole lot better. If NASDAQ loses, that generally means Russell loses worse, doesn't it? Yeah, but actually they're better than the NASDAQ. They're down about one and a half percent, about 33 bucks. Oh, goody. They weren't as bad as that. <laughs> Bottom line, it really kind of stunk. NASDAQ doesn't surprise me much because the dock workers strike messes up imports. A lot of NASDAQ stocks are doing a lot of business overseas. Uh, the dock workers strike is in effect. We need to clarify something because we weren't 100% clear on it earlier. Uh, the dock workers are officially only on strike on the East Coast. So, yeah, Los Angeles is still working, but uh, anybody that remembers the one we had last time during the, uh, uh, the last time we had a dock worker strike, one coast goes on strike, the other at least slows down. So this is not good news to hear that. Well, that's right. And so we realize that there are actually two unions. There's the East Coast Union and the West Coast Union. And the last time this happened, it was the West Coast Union dock mm -hmm. workers that um, that went on strike or slowed down, or actually they did go on strike for a while. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so we we now it's the other side, it's the east side, um, which will more affect us here in Florida. Um, obviously, things will still get in the ports over on the west coast, but it's going to take a lot longer for them to get here if they if they can get here. Yeah, and it needs to be remembered, too, if, if the eastern half of the country gets shut down as far as dock workers, even if they don't do a slowdown on the West Coast, which sympathy strikes are common, normal, and you know, the, the labor movement would say healthy, we're going to reroute a whole lot of container ships that were planning on going through the Panama Canal and around the southern flank. They're going to get rerouted to the West Coast to make sure they can unload, so we're going to have a traffic jam out west anyway. That's right. Yep. There'll be more and more ships trying to get in there, which is going to make it more difficult still to get yep. stuff. But just to clarify, it is technically only the East Coast dock workers that are on strike. So just so everybody knows that we know that we think we know what we're talking about, we, we actually do. <laughs> Yesterday, Iran started lobbing 180-plus missiles at Israel. My report, anyway, nobody... Nobody killed in Israel. They got most of them down, and the ones that fell were in unoccupied territory. But nevertheless, that's never good news for our finances. And that, along with the dock workers, kind of contributed to an off day. We're just kind of in lousy humor to start out October, aren't we? 
We, we really are. And I will tell you, Dave, it's not much better today. Yeah, I wouldn't expect it. I mean, we haven't settled any of those problems. And the dock workers aren't even speaking to their employers yet. And what they're striking over, by the way, is they don't like automation. I'm sorry, the cranes are getting computerized. Whether one likes it or not, a lot of this stuff is going to be robot-controlled. And obviously the laborers don't like that one tiny little bit. So i got a sneaking hunch they're, they're fighting an uphill battle, and this might be a protracted strike simply on the subject of the, uh, the, subject of the reason they're striking. It could very well be. You know, that, that is a big deal. And, um, but, you know, I think the... Uh, you know, there's going to have to be some give and take. That's just the way it works, and, oh, and we're going to see it happen. I mean, they they want instead of fifty percent increase, they want what a seventy five percent, I think, increase um, in in their wages over the next five or six years. So, you know, there's a lot to be worked out, but they need to start. I mean, that's the issue. Absolutely. Now we get past to the international and the labor issues, and we start talking about employment as we start getting really busy. Yesterday morning, the JOLTS report came out, Job Openings and Labor Turnover Survey. It showed uh, moderate but not sharp cooling in the labor market. That's relatively good news. We increased to 8.04 million jobs, but at the same time, the quit rate and the higher rate saw the lowest levels since 2015 and 2013 as workers are finding matching jobs for their skills getting harder to get, which kind of put a little bit of a crimp on that rose. Then we get the ADP report this morning, private sector employment. That's good news. We were expecting 120,000 private sector jobs. Last month, ADP says they added 143,000 private sector jobs. We always say with the ADP, they have the absolute numbers never exactly on, but they generally tend to show the trend correctly, which gives us an interesting indication for Friday, doesn't it? It really does, Dave, because that is almost, not quite, but almost a 50% increase over what it was last month. So, yeah, um, yeah that would be a good, a good increase. And if that really does show up in the Friday report, then, um, you know, I would think that's going to make uh, people happy. It should make people happy. What the reaction on Wall Street might be, I don't know, because I'm looking at it as well as if you take it the good news, bad news scenario. It might also mean the economy was picking up pretty well before we reduced interest rates, and I would start worrying about inflation as well. Yeah, well, that's true, too. Yeah, there's always <laughs> two sides to that point. You know, normally you're the one that's short of merry sunshine, and I'm the one that's full of beans today. <laughs> we're, we're, we're trading roles. Uh, yesterday uh, we uh, were talking about CVS. Uh, they're continuing to work on their breakup, the idea of trying to integrate everything in healthcare from the insurance to the drugstore to the benefit manager on the insurance continues to go. I didn't see what's happening to their stock. Are their investors happy with that or are they honked off? You know, I saw that it's moved on me. That it's not in my normal tip sheet. I did see that it was trading down just a little bit this morning. Let's see if I can find it again real fast uh, because it's uh, – CVS should be easy to pull up. It is actually trading up this morning almost 3%. Okay, well, that, that actually holds into something I was saying at the end of the day yesterday. I've always been a big advocate of core competency, and if you're great at running a drugstore, what the Sam Hill are you doing buying an insurance company? Maybe their investors are thinking the same way. Oh, well, that's true. I mean, let's, let's, get, let's get back to what we're good at. And and let's do really good at those things and be very, very profitable at those things. And and then let's distribute those profits out to the shareholders and let's don't go buy stuff we don't need. I kind of hear that. Sounds like Jeff Bezos' school of thoughts for a couple of seconds there. <laughs> uh, talking yes. about other things, one other drag on the market, the biggest uh, publicly traded company in the, in the nation, uh, it went down by 3% yesterday as uh, Barclays issued a, quote, pessimistic forecast on the iPhone 16 demand, Apple lost 3% in the process yesterday. Uh, another uh, just side lesson for corporate life, they released a phone and they didn't have the artificial intelligence software yet to put on it, so why buy a new phone? I did, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Let, let's put out a phone and none of the fancy pants features we're talking about it having are going to be available until the end of the month. you got to wonder as to uh, what they were thinking when they did that. Yeah. Hey, I did see something that caught my attention this morning in the banking yep. industry. 
-hmm. There are bank branches closing like crazy, Dave. Uh, In the first six months of this year, there was almost 540 branches closed, bank branches closed, just done. We're Hmm. we're closing. Bank of America is the biggest one. Uh, I think they've closed almost 100 branches in the first six months of this year. Yeah, that, that kind of hits me as interesting. As what was it two weeks ago? We had the announcement that they were going to add offices too. Sounds like they're just moving them around and putting in more computers, doesn't it? Well, yeah, I think so. I think we're going to huh. more more online banking, really. Absolutely. I, I, I know what you know. The bank I deal with, I'm I end up doing ninety five percent of my business with them on my cell phone. So it's it's getting to the point where it's a less personnel intensive business than it used to be by a long shot. Yeah, it is. It really is. It certainly is. Uh, We talked at the outset yesterday that uh, Nike was going to report at the end of the uh, day yesterday. I gather they had a mixed bag report that didn't impress their investors all that much. Well, they did, Dave. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't impressive. They actually, they, they did beat on earnings, though. Let's let's put that out there. They they did beat on earnings. Uh, they they came in at like uh, seventy cents a share versus fifty two cents a share. But what's got them? There's two things that's catching them this morning. One is they missed on revenue. They, they didn't miss by a bunch, but that, but they missed by about I don't know fifty million maybe in revenue. Oh. Um, yeah. So. But here's the thing I think is the biggest thing is they they removed their full year guidance. Um, and, and here's why. They're replacing their CEO. So it's uh, uh, Mr. Hill is coming back to the company. Um, uh, he'd been there before. And so he, he's going to take the helm again. And so they have basically pulled all that stuff out. They've got a lot of inventory they're going to have to get rid of. And uh, and create some new uh, new demand for their existing or new lines of shoes. So that uh, that has Nike trading down today seven point seven percent. Woo! Yeah. Saw a tidbit. They're introducing a new Air sneaker at a new premium price. Evidently, that's part of his new strategy. But yeah, pulling your guidance even when it's for good reason never does you good news on your stock price, does it? No, I mean, that's down significantly, but that's not near as bad as Humana. Uh, Humana did not report. They they didn't report their earnings, but they did come out with some preliminary Medicare Advantage data for 2025. Mm -hmm. In 2024, 94% of their enrollees in their Advantage plan were in their four-star rated or above plan which I assume means they get more money from Medicare. I would uh, assume that would be good news, wouldn't it? Well, that would be, but that number is down to 25% for 2025. Woo! Yeah. And yeah, that would not probably, good. Yeah, that, that would not be good news for one stock if that means less Medicare compensation coming in for each patient, does it? Exactly. So they're down almost 19% this morning. Key wrap. Have you got any good news this morning? I uh, wish I could find some, but uh, I'm having a hard time here. LPL Financial, uh, they're down this morning about 3% because uh, they fired their CEO for, quote, commitment to a respectful workplace was violated. Um, and so We can read that, between the lines what that yeah. means, can't we? Yep. Yep. So he was fired. Harley Davidson got downgraded. Um, by Berard, and so they're trading down almost 4% this morning. Can't find you any know, green. I, I, th- I think we just time. need you – know, I was going to say, I think we just need to bag the specifics and look at the markets because they're no better this morning. 45 minutes before we open this morning, what are we doing with our money today anyway? So let's get to the right spot. Here we go. So actually things have improved, Dave. The Dow's only down uh, 26 bucks, so less than a tenth of a percent. The uh, S&P 500 is down a tenth of a percent, and we do have some green ink on the NASDAQ 100, up a little over a tenth of a percent. So uh, really some some better news there as we get started. Uh, Then on the commodity side of the coin, I'm going to have to switch to my cell phone because that, that page isn't working. Just one second here. So on the commodities side, we've got uh, silver 
up about uh, three quarters of a percent to almost thirty-two dollars, thirty-one ninety-seven an ounce. Uh, gold is down about seven tenths of a percent, and then that lovely crude oil took a huge jump, up almost three percent this morning to seventy-one dollars and eighty-two cents a barrel. Wowzers, and I think I got a pretty good idea as to why between Iran lobbing stuff at Israel and the fact that all of a sudden the Asian rim is going crazy on us. Uh, the rest of the market's mostly off, but the mainland Chinese markets, with all the stimulus policies the government has going in for the uh, like third or fourth day in a row, one of the mainland Chinese indexes was up by another 10% yesterday. And my understanding is building material prices in China are just skyrocketing as they're back to building junk they don't need. So that means the Asian rim on balance was up and mostly based on their 500-pound gorilla in China, and that implies more demand for energy. European stocks generally up, but just fractionally halfway through. We're almost dead flat. The two European indexes, one's off by a tenth of a percent, the other one's up by a tenth of a percent halfway through their days. So they're basically going nowhere and uh, kind of watching and seeing what we're going to do today. Getting a plan for a retirement, that's important. That takes a specialist, and I know a specialist. That's you. How do I find you to get my plan together? Dave, that's why I developed the core retirement design, to help people design that retirement they always dreamed of. Give us a call at 863-382-0037 to schedule your core retirement analysis. And then join us this weekend for the Statler Financial Radio Show, 6 a.m. and noon on Saturday, 10 a.m. Sunday morning on Highlands News Talk, 7.30 a.m. and 95.3 FM. And back here tomorrow morning to see what international events and uh, strike actions and the rest are affecting our money tomorrow morning, same time here on Light. And I'll see you then, sir. All right, man. Have a great day. Thank you. It's 105.7 Light FM and Statler Financial Services, Philip Statler. Once again, I want to thank you for joining us today. I hope your week and your month is off to a great start, unlike the markets. But we'll talk about them again tomorrow. Join us then. Take care. Have a great day. So long. Bye now.